Hello everybody, so welcome to my review of One Piece chapter 1042. So Oda decides to include another twist in Luffy vs Kaido round 3, or what could be round 4 after this chapter, we don't know. Let's start off with the cover page with the ongoing adventures of the Whole Cake Island slash Gemma 66 Vince Smoke arc. Cover story with putting, I guess, done, satisfied beating the hell out of Niji because you have Oven there. We also have a development with Brule returning, we see Brule there. It's cool that we have Oda's making this not as predictable because a lot of people assume that Pudding was gonna do something with Oven's memories. No, turns out that's not the case. Since Brule is open up, since Brule has a portal to the mirror world open, I'm assuming we're one step closer to see Katakuri since that's the last time we saw him and Brule in the mirror world. What what was that for waiting to see about that? We start off the chapter at the castle interior basement level with something a lot of people will assume, myself included, that X Street was get back, going to get back up, and turns out he did. However, his sh shine doesn't really last long. If he used Awakening, that's kind of disappointing because of the way things turned out. But he does get a hit in on the Asaka Pole Zero agent. I guess Ma is still down for the count because you can see him in the background. I don't know if he's going to get back up or he's, if he's just done. But I do have to give this agent credit because he was able to take the hit and counter with Rako Shuki with his finger and then just blast x rate with it in his hybrid form. And that, and that was the end for him. Then we switched to the Flower Capital and the ending festivities of Fire Festival and we're to the point where Toko, who's out, as of right now the only child, the only character besides Hitetsu, that kind of matters right now. So I'm wondering what her wish is going to be. Probably something to do with Yasui, her father. So we move on to the rooftop with Luffy and Gear Force Snake Man using, continuing the assault with Hydra on Kaido. And Kaido still can't really tell where these attacks are coming from because Kaido's like getting nailed. He's, he actually blocks one of the attacks with his mace. But Luffy continues the attack because one connects right at his jaw and then another connect, connects with with his side, so Kaido's kind of like, Rubber should be able to do this, this this hurts. Luffy's altering the trajectory so he can nail Kaido with the Hydra punches. It's only until he switches into Dragon Mode, and then he says something that's kind of interesting. Before then, I hope you don't think you're the only one who can see the future. I don't know if he means that literally, I wouldn't be surprised. Is this kind of like hinting that Kaido could also see the future with Observation Hockey? Because he dodges the attack similar to the way Luffy would dodge or Captain Cody would dodge an attack using Observation Hockey. Kaido avoids the Hydro Punch from Luffy and then comes in and actually bites and actually munches down on Luffy. He eats him up and then he just spits him back out and then uses, uses Blast Breath. Because the attack's shooting straight down and Luffy gets sent through on Higashimo, but he bounces back with Bounce Man and actually switches. He comes in with Gomma Gomma, no, oh, Supreme Kong Gun, actually lands an attack on Kaido. But Luffy is preserving all his energy here because he's like, I, I can't lose Gear 4 here. And then Kaido makes an observation, you're in even worse shape than I thought, which is interesting because considering what happens by the end of this chapter. So we know after Gear, we know after gear 4 times out, he's done. He's maxed out for 10 minutes. So Gear 4 can't time out yet because there's nothing stopping Kaido if that was the case. So, narratively speaking, it does make sense for Luffy to still be in Gear 4. I'm going to keep that crystal clear. So, Kaido, so Kaido unleashes Fondo Bagua again. So, he tanks the hit. You see some steam out of Luffy's mouth. Then, what Luffy does, he actually, he actually inhales the steam again. So, that's, that's kind of key. Because as soon as he does that, he's back up and he's like, one more shot. I got one more shot left. Which we know that's not the case because obviously this fight ain't ending just yet. So he it comes in with Gummy Gummy. No, I'm assuming he's about to use Supreme Khan Gun again. We don't know. Kaido's about to use Thunder Roarings, and he's like, "Bring it on!" It doesn't matter because those attacks never connect because the Cipher Port agent comes out of nowhere, uses Iron Body and attack. But that is nothing more than the distraction for Kaido. To this just gives Kaido the opening to nail Luffy, which he does, and just smashes him into the ground. Two points I want to add to this. You can clearly see Kaido is like CP0. Like he didn't know they were on Onigashima. Now obviously this is a reference to not only Kazuki Oden and Kaido. Because obviously there was an interference there with Higarashi Posing his Momonosuke to get Kaido's attention. 
The same thing happened to Odin, that happened to Luffy in this chat by the end of this chapter, and that's but they both get distracted, they both get nailed by Kaido. Only difference is we don't see Luffy knocked out. We don't see his eyes, we just see him smashed into the ground, and that's where the chapter ends. So that's the first point. The second point, the fact that this is so similar to like what happened with Odin and Kaido and the fact that the narrative is that no one can beat Kaido 1v1 unless there's interference because Odin would have defeated Kaido or we don't really know for sure. That's the perception that a lot of people got and a lot of people weren't happy with that because it kind of undermined Ka Kaido a little bit. So wait a minute, Kaido's not supposed to lose 1v1. But now this has happened again. However, I do like this scenario and I'm going to in-depth as to why. But the fact that obviously it's a distraction, we know what happened after Odin KO'd, we know what happened to Higurashi, Kaido killed Higurashi because she interfered. So, I don't know if the same thing's going to happen with the Cypher Ball agent. If, you better have a plan to like escape because if he sticks around, he's done. Because I, cause I definitely see the same thing happening. Also, this is dead similar to what happened with Katakuri and Luffy. When, but that distraction allows Katakuri to nail Luffy. We know what happened after that. Katakuri decided to even up the playing field and stab himself. I don't think Kaido is going to do that because it will be too similar. That CP0 agent is done because he was so hesitant to interfere in the first place. And I do have to give him props because he's still able, despite being stabbed by x Drake, he was still able to get in the way. I don't know if there's any more CP0 agents on those warships like I'm thinking there are because if that's the case, then CP0 on Wano is technically done. We know Kaido's not going to tolerate this. This would be a pretty good opportunity for Oda to cut away and actually segue into Kaido's flashback, the beginning of Kaido's flashback, because we can see there's some reluctance on Kaido's face. We know he what he was having fun with Luffy, even though things were getting serious towards the end. And I also like this scenario too, is because if Luffy gets back up, which he probably will, he's got to amount even more stamina. Luffy proves Luffy's unlimited when it comes to stamina, but he's got to dig down deep, which is cool because it's the, it's the same thing that Kid and Law had to do in their respective fights. Law and Kid were against the Yonko and they were spamming Awakening. By the way, that's another reason why I don't think Luffy's KO'd is because he's going to use Awakenings pretty soon and he could possibly use a new mode, whether it's Gear 4, the, set, the fourth mode in Gear 4, completely new mode in Gear 5th, we don't know. Like I said, this is a pretty good way to cut off and dive into Kaido's flashback since things have sort of died down a little bit. Speaking of dying, what do you think is going to happen to that CP0 agent? Do you think he's going to dip again or do you think Kaido's going to end him? But if nothing else, if Robin's pretty much safe after this chapter, be, unless there's an Admiral on those warships or a CP0 agent on those ships, Cypher Ball, CP0 on Onigashima and Wano in general are pretty much done. Kaido's not going to tolerate this, so I can't wait to see what happens next. Very simplistic chapter for Oda to focus on Luffy versus Kaido, but considering there's not too many plot points, I guess it makes sense. The other plot point, really, technically speaking, is the Strats to get together, Momo to like control Onigashima, and also we have we have to get like Yamato's answer to like Momonosuke at saying, "Hey, am I a cow for not wanting to open up the borders to Wano to expose?" The people are wanted to danger, and Yamato is going to give a response, but we don't get to, it cuts away, so maybe we'll get that too. Also, with Zunisha, that's another plot point we have to, that has to get t taken care of, and whether or not if anyone threatening is on those warships. Also, another plot point is come, Hiori versus Orochi. We need to see, see what Hiori is about to do to Orochi, or unless Orochi has a plan. An interesting twist is the Cypher Port Zero agent makes it out of there alive. That would be a neat little twist, but I don't see that happening. Let me know what you guys think down below. That's going to do it for you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Like the review if you did it. A thumbs up. I appreciate that. Subscribe channel for One Piece. Catch you guys later. Thanks guys. Bye.